Welcome to the art segment of Impact. I'm Philip Morris, CEO at Proctors, and our guest today is Rebecca Schoonmaker Finnan, who is the president of the Upstate Artists Guild. Hello. Hello. How are you, Rebecca? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Um, president of an artist guild sounds like, and I said this before, at a previous guest who's the head of the Schenectady Artist Society, sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> It is a lot of work, um, but luckily we have, it's a volunteer um, run organization with probably 10 of us that all chip in to make everything happen. So the officer part is really, you know, who is willing to be the officer that year. <laughs> so first, your work, what do you make? Um, I make uh, abstract art, um, colors and shapes is how I describe it. I work in all different mediums. Um, Mostly watercolor with colored pencil over it. Um, oil paintings I haven't done in a while, but I used to. Um, and then I work in pottery. I do a Raku workshop every summer uh, down in Otsego County with Elizabeth Neilds. And uh, it's, I always say that it, for five days I'm just an artist and nothing else because oh, your cell great. phone doesn't work down there. And it's a you know, very relaxed environment of old barns turned into studios and um, workspace and you make a body of work and then there's a show at the end of the workshop and you get to meet a lot of interesting people and oh, that's great yeah, really I'm not fun. an artist at all but I did spend one full 12 hour day at a brass pouring mm. uh, where there were five artists who had rented this kiln and we were there to pour their modest sized pieces and to witness the whole process was just a blast. And, you know, I felt like I was in another place, another yeah. planet almost. Well, what's neat about Raku is it's a, you know, ancient Japanese form of pottery where you're firing pottery very fast um, and wood, high temperatures. Right? Well, we, we use propane um, so that we can get it up quick, but the pieces are only in the kiln for about 15 minutes as opposed to a regular firing where, mm -hmm. you're, you know, it's hours and hours. And we're taking the pieces out of the kiln when they're red hot and then putting them into a trash can full of combustible materials such as um, newspaper or wood chips and then it catches on fire and then you smother the fire. And um, because the glazes are searching for oxygen and the fire is looking for oxygen to burn, different things happen inside the um, glazes themselves so you don't know if you're going to get a red or a green or a black or a gray color so it's kind of just up to the piece to tell you how it's going to come out so it's a really fun process but also very you know not dangerous but it's dangerous for the pieces um, because a lot of times they crack or break mm -hmm. because of the extreme conditions you're putting them under so that part's requires kind special of exciting clays, also. I presume? Do you need well it's a regular clay but with a lot more grog in it so it has a lot more um, flexibility with the high heat um, I actually thought with Raku there was also um, what's the what's the silica that's in ceramics that uh, that's in a high end uh, industrial ceramic isn't there something else that goes in the clay for that high, extra high heat I think I, just the grog because then it just, makes yeah, it yeah, okay. more porous and allows so for more your multimedia pieces uh, uh, talk about those for a minute uh, do you have a, do you have a, a subject or a no, a lot of times the way they start out is just kind of being um, influenced by what's around me, a lot of nature and the repetitiveness of nature. And so I kind of have this mark that I make of this square that I just kind of make over and over again. And I've talked about it being like a little window and all these little windows giving you glimpses into mm. different pieces because as each square and layer happens, it kind of creates another window on top of another window. And so I. That's fabulous. <laughs> they sound great. They sound wonderful. Yeah. Um, all your life have you been making things? Yes. Yep. So I've, what's the first thing you could think of you made? Um, I think in, you know, in grammar school and maybe even before in nursery school, just making crafts and um, sewing with my grandmother. She taught me how to sew and we'd make little dolls and glue and sew things onto them. Did you major in art? I did. Yep, I uh, started out thinking I was going to be an art teacher, uh, so I started off with art education. I w went to New Paltz for a couple of years and then transferred to the University of South Florida in Tampa. And it was hard to get things done down there because it's so nice. Um, <laughs> but I did graduate with a, um, a B BA, Bachelor of Arts, and then I decided to go on and get my master's, and that's how I came back to Albany. Um, so I have an MFA from SUNY Albany, and then I spent about 
seven or eight years as an adjunct teacher, but it doesn't pay the bills per se. So I had other jobs on top of that and that just kind of got to be a lot. So I still have that dream of being an adjunct professor someday. So <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So the talk about the Upstate Artists Guild. How old is that? What, I, I actually um, feel badly I don't know about it. Yeah, it, well, in a, back in 2000, well, before 2005, like around 2003, 2004, there was a group of people that kind of got together through, uh, they worked at a gaming company, like designing video mm -hmm. games, and uh, they wanted to kind of open up a space where we could show art, and then one of the... Um, Founding members Rob and Diaz wanted to have a art store, and then another founding member wanted to have a little cafe, and it was kind of just this idea of finding a shared space to have these events happen, um, and then it kind of blossomed. Uh, a, a bunch of us met at the uh, there was a barter one. There was a house in Washington Park that we kind of took over. Um, Tommy Watkins headed it up, and uh, it was just filled with art and artists. And in the room that my art was in, I met a couple other. Um, which would turn into be the founding members of the UAG. And we kind of just all got together and then in 2005, September of 2005, um, there was about 10 or 11 of us and we thought if we could find a space we could throw on a one day show during Larkfest. So we found the old space 247 Lark, it's across from Ben and Jerry's, it's the basement space, it used to be unchained, people know it as all the other places that it was. Um, and we just kind of went in, cleaned it up, painted the walls white, and hung up an art show. And then we kind of thought this would be nice if we had a space to always have art, and we talked to the landlord, because it was empty at the time, about how much the rent would be, and then we all would chip in. I think it was back then we all chipped in about $100, so rent was around 1100 and we kept the space. And so we've been in that space since September of 2005. We've made a lot of improvements to it, um, taking out the drop ceiling and putting in lighting. and. Um, now we have a monthly show, always different. It's a lot of work to put on 12 shows in a year. Um, they're themed shows, so we pick a, a theme and then put out a call for art and anyone can submit. Um, any media is accepted, so we've had shows with you know oil paintings, um, colored pencil, drawings, video, sculpture. Is it sort of a sculpture. member's gallery? Or is it well, the, the organization itself is a member-run organization because we couldn't always just keep chipping in our own money, so we had to come up with a way of making it kind of self-sufficient. Um, so we offer memberships and those member dues and the submission fees are what kind of mm -hmm. pay the rent at the space. Um, but in terms of the exhibitions, um, no one's trying to curate one exactly. You're you're doing having members' well, response to it. We more. have members, and we have a lot of non-members submit. Um, the benefit of being a member is your submission fee is lower. But it's the idea, whole idea was to give people a space to show their art, mm. and you know anybody, students, kids, um, adults that are just dabbling in it or just trying it out. Um, but that whole idea of like putting it up on the wall and what that means, and having a conversation with someone when they come in to look at it. Um, but the, all the shows are juried, so we take all the submissions and we sit down and review them. It's usually in one of the board members' living rooms and we look through them all. And you know, mainly we're just looking for quality and it fitting the theme and, and giving people a shot. Um, so, and we can fit about 35 pieces in the main part of the gallery, so we have to be careful of space as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so then we get together the Wednesday before first Friday and about, there's probably six or seven of us that show up every time and we arrange the work and curate it and then hang it up and by first Friday we're ready You're to there, go. there, ready to roll, ready <laughs> yep. to rock. Yep. And first Friday does great. I mean, lots yeah, of people. Yeah, it's been and, very successful and oh. we were really excited to see it like span disconnectedity with Mitch Messmore bringing it here and then to tr the Troy. Um, we're Troy obviously jealous of Troy Night Out because they have all that city funding and RPI helping them. But yeah, well, we and, still and, and, make Troy, it work. and Troy has a certain um, uh, focus. Uh, you know, the downtown is a focus, whereas in Albany, kind of there's Lark, there's Down by Pearl. I mean, it's a little yeah, bit tough to make it all yeah. uh, all work. And the galleries that are at the colleges, which are great, but they're a little off, uh, they're the off the that path. path yeah. and it exactly has the same issue. It's, we're not consolidated enough. Yeah, yeah, but I rode the, there was a bus in the beginning and I used to ride that around to yeah, different places yeah, and it's, yeah. it's kind of fun to see the city a different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So where do you imagine UAG going? What do you think will happen in the next four or five years? Well, um, I've always had a goal that the UAG and all of us have would be self-sufficient. So, you know, run on grants and, and funded by state and federal money. But over the years that money's been, you know, dissipating, so you have to find creative ways. And 
last year at this time we were actually being um, evicted from our space because we just couldn't keep up. Submissions were down, members weren't able to pay their dues and we don't like to just kick people out because you can't pay your dues. Um, and we don't turn anyone away. You know, if you want to submit art, but you don't have the submission fee, we make arrangements where you can sit gallery hours instead. So, you know, we've always been about just showing the art. And we don't make much on the sale of art, so we kind of had to reinvent how are we going to save ourselves and, and make money and keep it self-sufficient so we weren't living check to check, per se, or having members, you know, pitch in $400 so we can pay the rent or um, things like that. So. Um, last February we threw a gala and it was our first annual gala and we ended up raising six thousand dollars which was enough to pay off our back rent and pay all of our you know debtors because we owed money to Metroland and Times Union for first Friday advertising and because um, the UAG is the you know umbrella company for that and we um, we raised money and we got ourselves out of debt and then we came up with a plan where we challenged the members um, to each raise $500 within a calendar year by either having events at the space, at the gallery, or by having an event that they already do or at another space and raising money for the mm -hmm. guild. Um, so that was successful. We work with the Albany Sonic Arts Collective. They do a lot of noise shows here and in Albany. And um, so they have an annual, annual fundraiser where they have all these bands come that have played and really want to just help us out because they like the space that they get to play in and they raised six hundred dollars for us so kind of just started challenging the members and the groups that we worked with to help us raise money and then we um, decided that we needed to have more fundraisers so we tried to do a fundraiser every couple of months so after the gala in April we had like a UAG tag sale where members and community members would bring all their garage sale type items and we opened up the gallery for a couple weekends in a row and sold tons of it and that you know brought in I think it was a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars um, and then over the summer we kind of lost potent we lost ground on the keeping a fundraiser every two months because it is a lot to organize um, and now we're back to February to our second annual black and white gala. Um, I actually work at Normanside Country Club, so they graciously donate the space and give us a really great deal on the food and beverage and labor and everything um, to create a great event and kind of get their name out there. And um, So that's coming up on Saturday, February 23rd, and tickets are available through our website. Um, but that gala, I mean, this year's goal, I wanted to raise $10,000, so we'll see how we do. We have a silent auction and a 50-50 and a, um, other, you know, wine pulls and um, things well, that kind of Before you money. leave, we're going to add something to your silent auction. So. Okay. Oh, great. Thank yeah. you very much. I haven't much. asked, but we're going to do it. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Um, and then, so my dream, like in my dream world, um, you know, the UAG is just self-sufficient and it has all these people running it and, you know, writing grants for it and putting in their time and energy and, you know, not getting burned out and spreading it around and lots of people just making it work. And um, I always say that when I win the lottery, I would buy the UAG, the building that we're in, and then we could have the bottom floor be a workspace. Um, the second floor would be our gallery. It's got nice hardwood floors, a big window um, for the natural light and high ceilings. And then there's a couple of apartments that we would like to turn into like artist run apartments where the artists that live there would help the sit gallery. Right. And yeah, so that would be the ultimate goal is having the UAG be more of like an arts center where you have, you know, workshops going on all the time, a gallery space showing, you know, work maybe made in the workshops or just work from other artists in the area and then kind of a living well my guess is you guys are going to do it uh, with your will. enthusiasm i'm <laughs> sure it'll happen so rebecca thank you very yeah. much for joining us thank you for having so it's us. rebecca okay. schoonmaker Finnan, the president of the uh, united artists guild um, with a space that they'd like to see happen in lark street albany thank you for joining us i'm philip morris thank you for joining us here at impact
Proctors, bringing the best in arts, education, and entertainment.